Hello, in this reaction, or in this video, sorry, I'm going to talk about the apple reaction, uh, another way to convert alcohols into alkyl halides. Uh, and so if I was really interested in converting this alcohol into this alkyl halide, I, I, based on my previous video, I might choose phosphorus tribromide. Phosphorus tribromide is actually pretty uh, nasty to handle, and maybe I don't want to do that. So uh, the apple reaction provides an alternative, so you have a alternative source of bromine and an alternative source of phosphorus, but you still end up producing something that has a, an activated phosphorus bromine bond that can then activate the alcohol and produce nucleophilic bromide anions to attack the, uh, or to do the, the la final SN2 step. So the mechanism of this reaction is pretty neat, uh, though it's got Got some things in it that maybe are, are look, might look a little bit weird to you. Uh, hang on, we'll get there. Um, the first step of this mechanism is a reaction between, between the triphenylphosphine and the carbon tetrabromide that produce this active phosphorus bromine species. And this is an SN2 reaction at phosphorus. And we generate uh, this tribromal methyl anion, which uh, the, the bromine and atoms can stabilize a little bit through induction, uh, but it's still actually a pretty good base. So it's going to be uh, wanting to hang out there. And, and we have our, our actually, I just, let's, let me, let me, branch out on my phosphorus for a moment. Put in all three phenyl groups. So it doesn't feel like I'm hiding anything on the structure of this phosphorus reagent. Um, because phosphorus used its lone pair to make this new bond, uh, it has positive charge. Uh, the next step is that this reagent acts as a base and it deprotonates the, the alcohol. So let's, uh, I swap the position of these two here so I don't have to redraw the alcohol. So it deprotonates the alcohol, pKa of that uh, alcohol is going to be around 16, pKa of that, uh, this, this tribromal, the tribromal methyl thing is going to be much higher uh, in the 30s perhaps. So here we go. Proton transfer. Now we are going to have an alkoxide anion, and uh, the other product over here is HCBr3 or bromo form, um, if you if you would. And then now I have an alkoxide anion, which we know are good nucleophiles. I have this triphenylphosphonium bromide cation, which is kind of hanging out with a positive charge and maybe unhappy about it. These two things can get together, nucleophilic attack, uh, and loss of leaving group on the phosphorus bromine side. Finally, phosphorus. Phosphorus still has positive charge. It has four bonds instead of its preferred three. Here are my three phenyl groups. Finally, I have something here that looks like an activated leaving group. I do not need another square. Uh, activated leaving group, which is the, the whole point of any of these reactions on alcohol alcohols is to activate that alcohol as some kind of better leaving group. And left over from this previous SN2 step is a bromide anion. It is a nucleophile. It can attack at that carbon. And we have another, one last SN2 reaction. 
And actually, I've drawn drawn the arrow maybe maybe not quite best here, coming off of the carbon oxygen double bond. Uh, a lot of people want to draw that actually to show that these pair electrons are going to even go over uh, and form a new oxygen phosphorus double bond. And we'll see that what we'll see what that's about here in a moment. Put a bromine, uh, and then from the phosphorus standpoint, the uh, the phosphorus product actually is triphenylphosphine oxide. So we have this new phosphorus oxygen double bond, and the phosphorus oxygen double bond is pretty strong. And triphenylphosphine oxide is often insoluble in the types of uh, solvents that these reactions are run in, so it precipitates out, and it's a nice visual uh, that the reaction has occurred. I chose to do this uh, example on a primary alcohol, but if I had chosen, uh, if I had chosen a secondary alcohol, ooh, ah, if I had chosen a secondary alcohol, um, then certainly we would have uh, ended up with uh, inversion, because while there are in fact three SN2 mechanism steps here. Um, you never knew that when you learned about the SN2 mechanism uh, that you would just see it all over the place. Uh, sometimes three three times in the same reaction. Uh, well, while there are three SN2 steps in this mechanism, only one of them's at the carbon, so we get uh, inversion. This uh, this reaction also works. Uh, let me maybe go back to my first alcohol. If you want, instead of wanting to use uh, the, the, the carbon tetrahalide, maybe use the R2, or actually I'm going to use I2 here and triphenylphosphine because this is the recipe for converting a, a, a carbon or an alcohol into a alkyl halide. Um, and so the, the source of the phosphorus, ox, uh, phosphor, uh, the source of iodine is just I2. We know that the, halog the, the uh, halogen molecules are, <clears throat> are electrophilic, uh, and so it should probably not surprise you that this kind of SN2 reaction at iodine is uh, something that can happen. Generate an iodide anion, which can be maybe be our nucleophile, or of course there's another iodide hanging out on the phosphorus that could be our, our nucleophile as well. So here we have uh, the way that you know I2 reacts with triphenylphosphine oxide, uh, or triphenylphosphine, sorry. And then the way it goes on and reacts with the alcohol is pretty similar uh, to, to generate triphenylphosphine oxide as a product and uh, the alkyl iodide. So this concludes my uh, series of videos on uh, converting alcohols into alkyl halides using a variety of SN2-like reactions. Thank you for watching.